competitive 40K network presents Art of War. Art of War. Strategy and tactics. Discussions with the best players on the planet. On the planet. With your host, Paul Murphy, and expert coach, Nick Nanavati. Hello and everyone, welcome to an episode of the Art of War podcast. My name is Paul Murphy, your host. I'm joined by Nick Nanavati. Hello everyone, it's always good to be back. And Brad Chester. What's going on? Brad, you are our special guest today, and we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. We're going to be walking through some of the new changes in the balanced data slate, and specifically through how it applies to a Space Marine Army list that we're going to build live on air. Like while we're going to walk through the process, really picking apart things, looking at things objectively, uh, building an efficient Space Marine list. This is part one of the conversation. Uh, part one is open to everyone. Part two is uh, for subscribers only. You can subscribe either on the YouTube channel, through the website. Uh, you, you, We get really deep into like how you play in specific matchups in that part two. It's a pretty awesome experience. If you haven't checked it out already, please consider it. But your part one, uh, we're going to go down uh, just kind of the thought process of you know, well, coming at this with fresh eyes, with a faction that uh, I'd say they're struggling right now, uh, but it you know it's it's really hard to get five zero with Space Marines at this moment. Yeah. I would say they're struggling, but they're going to make a resurgence because they got some serious buffs. Some serious buffs, yeah. Seriously, armor. What's it called? Armor of contempt. Armor of contempt. Armor of contempt. It's not even. Just, it's the armor of contempt plus the nerfs to indirect. It's they go hand in hand because. That that buff actually means that most indirect that's shooting at you, they're losing an indirect, uh, losing an AP from indirect, and they're gaining the ability to have minus one to all AP that's coming in. So effectively, you're ignoring old AP two indirect. You're just getting a regular save against that, and that's amazing. It just makes you so much more durable. You have so many more options as a marine player now because you can set up because you're you, you're durability is that much better you have so many more options uh to be able to withstand to have pieces going into the later game yeah i I, when i'm running lists i'm almost imagining indirect fire is not even a thing in the game because i I play eldar too and as an eldar player i'm people are like why don't you take night spinners or shadow weaver still and the fact that you're minus one ballistic skill and then they get a plus one save and marines get that extra plus one save you're just not doing anything with it and that's the biggest thing on it is that People don't really just look at it and they're like, oh, they're minus one hit. No, they're not. They're minus one ballistic skill, which then you can stack in another minus one to hit from either stratagems or dense cover, things of that nature. So indirect fire took just a huge hit. And I, it, just like Nick was saying, I don't think you're going to see a ton of it. So it really so makes The wording sense. there, very specific, is that it worsens the ballistic skill. It's not the neg one to hit. That is very important. So glad you brought that up. Yeah, it's just a, a huge deal because you're looking at people possibly hitting you on five, sixes. You know, like you're just not going to – people aren't going to pay premium points for indirect fire. And that extra save from you means that you now can also structure a lot of your lists a little bit differently. You aren't going to use as many storm shields and things of that nature. You're already a little more durable. Now you can do pack a little more punch, get a little more guys out there. So I want to take this podcast opportunity to basically figure out what a marine list looks like. The world is different. Indirect fire is kind of a thing of the past, at least we're hypothesizing. Marines are tough now. Tyranids just came out. What do you have to do as a space marine player to keep up with the meta? Color your marines green and play them as salamanders, baby. Yeah, for the purpose of this, let's uh, let's talk about you know maybe not being sp- uh, married to a specific chapter. You know, let's. I, know, I want to build a list. Screw it. Like, yeah. what specific chapter, relics, I, warlord traits? I want to get in. You don't talk to me like that. I'm married to Vulcan. This is a good relationship. Why, why Everything's sound? working out for us. Uh, no, I meant for people <laughs> listening. It's like if you, if you if you have marine models at home uh, and you want to get them on the table and potentially swing for the fences, you know, at at a tournament, at a match play event, what's the best way to come about doing it? Sounds like we landed on salamanders. A little bit of a spoiler there, but. Uh, you know, look at it at that from that a, a lot of these are going to be really universal though i mean obviously you're going to lean a little bit harder into certain chapters because they have certain certain strengths but overall a lot of these things are going to apply for everything because of the fact that uh, marines have 
some universal good units and things of that nature. And, and the thing is, is that most of the time for the Marines here, even if it's a specific unit, like you're going to take your blood angel sanguine guard and stuff like that, we're going to have battlefield roles that are going to transfer over. You're still going to have your units that are fast melee. You're going to have your long range support and things of that nature. So those can universally transfer over depending on what, uh, what chapter you're playing. So nice. why are we, why are you married to salamanders? Why is everyone painting the Marines green? Well, it's a, I married to salamanders just because of the fact that you I like love salamanders. salamanders. Exactly. <laughs> For, but, but no, salamanders just get a huge buff. Salamanders are the only brain chapter to get an individual buff, which is salamanders already had ignore AP one. So now with everyone getting armor and contempt, which is, Making and also it's not just ignoring AP one; it makes all AP go down one, which is a big difference. But salamanders get no one can reroll wounds against salamanders, which is a big deal. Yeah, salamanders are actually one of those chapters. I think a lot of people don't really know what they do or what they're about. They have a lot of weird rules, and they're not a popular chapter from a competitive standpoint. Oh yeah. So, um, they ignoring reroll wounds is awesome, but only against some armies, right? Like when when you're playing against an Eldar player and they're casting Doom. It's awesome when you're playing against uh, Tyranids and they use that strat to reroll wounds. It's awesome. But some armies just don't reroll wounds. So yeah, and sometimes but, but, you have a chapter tactic. Don't you feel it that way? Sometimes. But the thing is, is that it lets me lean into certain things and be very confident about my durability on that. T becomes a big deal. Uh, they have, it's like Salamanders have a psychic power that can make you plus one to your toughness. And they can put it on literally any salamander it's not core locked it's not anything it's just straight salamander so you can have t8 characters t9 tanks so when you're not getting rerolls to wound on that uh, and they have some other abilities such as some other relics can make you minus one to wound so you literally have guys that are only being wounded on sixes and no one gets any rerolls for them so the durability of them becomes very consistent and I know they can also be super hard to charge because they have the heroic intervention 2D6. Horn protectors, it's amazing. Can you walk us through how that works? I, I still don't really understand it. It's so weird and broken. <laughs> so, so effectively, it, 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 it's anybody, but it's going to be your aggressor squad with flamers. <laughs> it's, you can, excuse me. Born protector says that you have a unit that is within Overwatch range, and it overwatches for the other unit. So basically you can do buddy overwatch and, and make it so that people that are unable to overwatch can still overwatch. So let me, let me get this straight. Like example, wise. let's say I have my scary unit and it's charging your intercessor. unit. My intercessors, just, intercessors are standing right in front of you. And what happens is, is you declare my intercessors and my aggressors are right behind them. So my aggressors are going to, I'm just going to read the strat to you. So before I even say example on it, basically when a charge is declared against salamander unit from your army, select one friendly salamander unit that has more than one inch away from your enemy unit. So it can't be in combat and within 12 inches of the unit that is the target of the charge. The selected unit can fire overwatch at the charging unit as if it were the target of the charge and the selected unit is target of the charge and instead fires overwatch as normal. In addition, you make a 2d6 heroic intervention as if you're a character. Holy crap, holy. Okay, there's a so, lot to unpack here. So basically, I'm standing behind that unit, and I fire Overwatch instead of them because of the fact. And then I heroic in with my power fists, and I turn that charge into, instead of you automatically getting there and killing my unit, taking away my my objective, maybe, you know, taking your stranglehold, whatever. Now I'm flaming your unit, uh, which could probably kill you anyways, and then I'm getting into the fray with a bunch of power fist hits. Yeah, and some interesting stuff there is a lot of times uh, you'll want to get really close to the unit you're in charge so you don't fail it. You don't want to be like 10 inches away declaring a charge. So you'll be within 12 inches of that aggressor squad. They'll be able to oh, shoot yeah. you. And then another thing with heroic intervention Let's say you, your aggressor is like eight inches away from my unit after I finished my charge roll and I somehow survived your overwatch or whatever. And then 
you were all six on your heroic intervention, so you wouldn't make uh, on your two d six roll, so you wouldn't make it into combat with me. You still could just move. You can just move around, get closer to me, not actually get engaged range. It's free movement in the middle of my turn. That's absolutely right. You fair. can and you could block off an objective, for instance, if they were ch- their whole plan was to charge and then maybe uh, you know use their pile in move and then their consolidate to get onto an objective, you can just block that off or you can stop them from consolidating into your shooting unit that you didn't want them to be able to touch. There's just lots of ways to utilize that effectively and really screw with your opponent's game plan that they had. All right. And I know Salamanders also have a couple other strats. They have self-sacrifice, which has changed a lot through FAQs, but basically you can have a unit kind of bodyguard for another unit to well, you just you choose it. So you basically make one unit. Um, you choose an infantry unit that, that has to have five or more models and is visible. Um, and then you choose that unit, and it basically you can't shoot at a different unit until that unit's dead. Right. So, um, like, if I have ten heavy intercessors, really tough unit, and then I have my eradicators behind them. I can just select my heavy intercessors as a self-sacrifice target, and then as long as you can see my heavy intercessors. Exactly. And then they have just the some tried and true that are amazing. They just have plus one to wound, and it works in any any phase. Yeah, one so, CP. It's so, so good. You're just going to be sounds pretty good. Yeah, Crucible of Battle is just great, because you can just consistently use it on anybody. Uh, it's That one is core character. So, but you can just use it in the fight or in the shooting phase, and you're going to be using it just constantly. It's just so good. So, excuse me. They also have a strat for adding plus one to your save against one damage weapons, and it is not just the it is not the gravis strat. It is actually usable on anyone. So it's a, it's a big deal on that because you can actually make a unit super durable. You can pop that on your vanguard vets, for instance, and just get that extra save so you you have a lot of options to be very very durable so excuse me in when you're looking at people shoot you know hitting you with uh lightning claw things of that nature all of a sudden you're still getting a two-up save so it's it's a big deal on that it's it's any infantry so i love the it, there is a big thing on it that goes any infantry that's not a servitor i'm not <laughs> sure it's trying to use it on servitors in the in the first place but i took servitors uh, to pro tabletop i'll find a way no i, I like servitors however they're a solid choice I, I i do love i love servitors i i almost i take servitors all the time however i'm not really spending strats on their durability so Brad, i thought you <laughs> were one of the top players in the world over here what do you mean you're not spending strats on servers i do that every game <laughs> <laughs> you're like they're definitely going to survive. <laughs> so, it's, just, so, it's about the effort extra extra effort it takes from your opponent. Yeah, the but there there's between the plus one to wound, the plus one to your save, where you can really the born protectors. You've got the fact that your character can get back up at a four up. There's the, you know there's always that. So, and you've got some really really good strats in in the salamanders. I mean, they're not even just good strats. They're strats that you're using all the time they're not even just like hey this is a good strat that's occasionally used you have strats that you're going to be using every single well, you, you know what strat. it is you do have a good pocket strats like self-sacrifice and born protectors are really nice in the right situations and then plus one of them like you said you're using it all the time uh two cp i know auto max is the shots for like a flame weapon in your yep. army so just 12 it's- heavy flamer hits on overwatch maybe you can do mortals with that for another CP. It, you just have such a wide array of strats and so on. It's one of the best things about them, actually. Yeah, I, I just I, I love this army on that. It's just you can do some really nasty things, and you also have people like Vulcan Heston. Where you can just choose a unit, and it rerolls all hits and all wounds with Melta and Flamers. So <sighs> you, yeah, so you're can, not thinking Salamander successors. I guess you want the real chapter tactic for ignoring. Oh, I want the real, the real deal. I want to ignore the invul, or ignore the influence. I'm also, I'm, I'm adding chapter tactics that no one knows about. They're written in Cran. I have the FAQ here. <laughs> so no, no. You're not playing iguanas here. No salamanders. <laughs> like, bro, that looks just very uh, dubious. I don't know if that's real. Don't worry about it, guys. It's it's a hundred percent. But uh, no, re- ignoring uh, rerolls for wounds is is a big deal, and I actually I like the option of Vulcan. He's not a hundred percent, but I do love being able to send, I don't know, an assault uh, attack bike squad with multi melts and just going, hey, I'm going to reroll everything, so something will die. So he's not that they, expensive, right? And he's tough to kill. 
He's a he's a buck thirty five and he's got a three up oh. invul. Yeah, that's pretty solid. He unfortunately has Vulcan spear, which apparently is made of wood because it doesn't hit very hard. But uh, uh, there's a, there's a lot of a reason to argue whether to take him or a beat stick chapter master. Um, there's you can make back and forth between what I kind of think it goes on what your army is though. I love the idea of having full rerolls on my flame weapons, full rerolls on my some multi meltas. And he's very, very strong with that because he just puts it on a core unit and just sends them out. And you can do some real damage with that. So I, I love just having his him in there. The other thing that I love is either you're going to take the primary's chaplain or you're going to take the captain on bike. You're going to give him the forge master to give him that plus two toughness. And then you're going to give him that adamant or salamander mantle so that you get minus one to wound. So you've got a T7 guy. It's minus one to wound. You can actually make him T8 with the Primaris Chaplain casting Drake skin on him. Primaris Libby, yeah. Yeah, from, from the Libby. And you either have a T7 or a T8 character that's minus one to wound that you get no rerolls to wound on. Oh, I've, I've used that guy. He is, unless you hit him with mortals, he's virtually unkillable. And if you yeah. make him obsec through another warlord trait that Salamanders have, they have rights of war like everybody else, and they also yep. have... Uh, uh, never give up. That's what it's called. Um, yep. Turn unit obsec. He that guy is amazing. Yeah, and the thing is, you can you have that. You have multiples. And the thing is, is that you they also have the uh, Aquila, so you can have a Primaris prim, bleh, Primaris Apothecary, who's giving feel no pain and re resin guys. And you can also have a character running around giving a six up feel no pain in two different places. So you can actually have a lot of feel no pain. So it's just extra hard to get rid of them. Yeah. So when, when I'm going through this army as you're putting it together, it seems like it's tough. I mean, that's the premise, right? We have no real wounds, make these guys tougher, make us obsec. You can't really shoot what you want effectively. You can't really charge what you want effectively. Um, so the weakness I'm spotting is that tough armies like this are typically really slow. Um, is that, like, what units are we taking in here? Because that's conceptually what I'm thinking. Here's the thing on it. I mean... I always like to lean into my army special rules and with salamanders that is when you're in the tactical doctrine you are plus one to wound with flamers and melted weapons so i do want a decent amount of both of those so i kind of always start with my six man aggressor unit i love it you can split it into threes if you'd like and it gives you lots of options because you're durable you can move up we again have that armor of contempt and you also have the salamander strat and you have the gravis strat so you have the ability to make them just really, really durable, getting down to that two up, ignoring a bunch of AP. And it is pretty easy to get into the tactical doctrine. Yes. All right, Brad, I'm so, busting out Battle Scribe right now. We're writing this list on my phone. I, and then I, I really, I still like the Primaris Apothecary. If you're going to bring, I'm going to bring a lot of infantry units and, and bigger units. So I definitely think he's an auto for me. Selfless Healer, of course, because. Why spend CP when you could not spend CP? So, seems good. And then after that, I, I think at least one attack bike squad with multi mounts is an auto if you're taking Vulcan. Because if you throw Vulcan in there, he can just, that gives you early game extension, extension of the board that is very, very, even without that plus one, is very, excuse me, reliable. And then also, you're talking about you need that speed. You're going to be a little slow. So you want some things that can reach out and touch someone. Now, you going Primaris Apothecary or uh, First Born Apothecary? Primaris Apothecary. I mean, it's only like five more points, right? Or I guess he got nerfed a bit. He's a bit more expensive now. So he is more expensive. It, it, cross savings. So there's there's a big deal on which one you take on that, to be honest. Yeah, I mean. If, well, so right now I have six aggressors of Primus Apothecary, and so Six from, and then you know you're going to go with because it's a Brad unit. We're definitely taking some infiltrators. Oh, I know. Uh, do do you want to lean more deep into the durability with these infiltrators and have them ignore the wound with the guy? Only if we get to the the end of the list and you go, hey, I've got a couple points left over because I'm super cheap. My upgrades usually consist of here's your t-shirt, here's your bat, and <laughs> go from there because I like to have more. I just like to have more stuff. So I do really like. 
the insurance policy of the infiltrators. And right now what I'm looking at is I'm actually thinking that I'm going to go double and cursor and an infiltrator squad. What are you referring to though with the, with the insurance policy you were talking about with the the insurance policy for infiltrators? It's a big deal for me is the infiltrators have a 12 inch cannot put any models in. You can't bring them in. Deployment exclusion. Exactly. And it, and it overrides. They did an FAQ on it. It overrides all other abilities. So you can't use gene stealer cults. You can't get close. You can't uh, use whatever ability you need to that gets that usually you would use and get within that 12 inches. So, and if you can't get within 12 inches, you can't declare a charge. So not only do they make it much easier to bubble out your backfield. So there are definitely a backfield objective taker. You, you box that area out. And I really like it. I call it my insurance because you're not, you're, you can bubble a little bit easier, but also when you're getting later in the tournament, later in the day, maybe you didn't sleep. Maybe you decided to go out with Mick all night and talk about days of past and you're tired. The good it, helps, it helps a little bit in the fact that you just know they can't get charged. So it, it makes it so you make less, uh, you have basically less ability to make mistakes boxing. I'm going to derail us for a second. Brad and I used to disagree on this. Forever, he was like, "You gotta spring for infiltrators." I'm like, "You can just play better and screen better. You don't need to pay <laughs> premium for your points." Now I am old, and I have I'm not as spry. I can't go out all night and, and screen properly. So now I've I've come around to the old man ways of taking infiltrators. <laughs> so you're being lazy. It is. It's just you're you have uh, tournament fatigue a lot of times. You know, it doesn't matter if you've been all, drinking or not. You just you probably spent too much time hanging out with everybody. Hopefully you have because enjoy your tournaments every time you go and just talking about everything, talking too much, eating too much, drinking too much. That's what you should be doing. Anything you can not like have to mentally tax yourself with because uh, screening against like certain armies is, is actually quite challenging. So having just infiltrators make it not a problem really is nice. It's huge on that. And I think you're going to see certain armies coming back. So certain armies that can get in there, uh, like a GSC, for instance, where they can have deep strikes within three, within six, within eight, and within nine. So you get to constantly get to figure this just helps that a lot. Don't be telling people how to beat my GSC. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's an army that, besides the breeds, is going to make a huge comeback because they just got pooed on by that indirect and that indirect nerf is a huge deal for that army yeah and they have buckets of ap so i'm, I'm very excited about my four armored friends but brad we need to finish this list we have like 1500 points to go we have infiltrators aggressors and a primary spot i'd like to slam down a big a big fatty unit of eradicators i think that gravis people gravis people gravis armor uh and gravis units are actually very very good right now with that bonus to armor of contempt and ignoring that one ap and also in salamanders where you can actually Again, spend it a CP to make that armor save one better. So you you have a lot of options to be very very durable in this armor. This unit hits very very hard, and I like them in coming in reserve a lot. Just pop it on the board. Uh, you can take a six man again, split it into threes. Uh, do what you want with that. Do you want any uh, multi melters, or do you just want your melter rifle? Right now, I'm just going to stick with the melter rifles. Again, I I like the multi the uh the multi melted just because of the extra shots but it is at minus one because you are moving you can they have a salamanders do have a stratagem that says that you can act as if you did not move but relentless determination but i'm already spending so many cp every single turn on things like flamecraft uh, protocols and things of that nature that i i definitely don't want to get so, into more I, I get that we're starting with the units that are going to benefit from salamanders. You're going to take aggressors because you're playing salamanders. You're going to take eradicators because you're playing salamanders. And they have a lot of options because they're taking six minutes. They can brick up or they can combat squad. How is this army going to play in your in your brain? What's the premise here? In my mind, the army is going to push up to the middle. And because of the fact that, like you were talking earlier, that the you're going to think there's such a big nerf to indirect that you're just going to see so few of it, I'm really planning on pushing up and trying to take those objectives mid-board and controlling the board, scoring my points, making people have to come over to me because I can sit behind something and stand on that. A Marine in cover now is a very nasty thing with ignoring that one AP and indirect going away. People have to come over and do something about that. Now I'm going to have a couple things that can extend the board, but my general plan is I want to take those that, that triangle in five objective missions. I want to 
hunker down on three of them all the time in most any mission, then kill somebody off so I can get my strangleholds every single turn. That objective triangle you just mentioned in those strangleholds is something we cover in detail in the war room when we teach lots of tactics and strategies about 40k, various factions, general gameplay. That series I actually did on all the different missions breaking down, which covers those objective triangles, that's available for free on YouTube, so check it out on AOW40k on our YouTube channel. Very nice. The thing is, is I want to have some things that extend out, but I want to be durable. I want to be able to take my secondaries. So I want to have my three units troops. I like them forward deploying because I want to be able to do things like D automatically. So stranglehold. Uh, I don't know if I want to build a two blast in here because some of these units are very expensive and I want them to do aggressive things. I think you're playing an oath of the moment kind of army. The way you're saying it's going to take the center, control the board. 100%. So like, oh, stranglehold is what we're building towards, and then your last one, R and D, is a good flex for Marines. You know, you can do banners in some missions. Do you want to try to work in a warpcraft type thing? I'm going to have that primary librarian in there, or a librarian, just period, a librarian. Adding period, a librarian. Yeah, I, I definitely want that. It gives it an option for it, and it also gives me uh, the big thing is I want is Drake skin in this army for that plus one toughness, and then I do like fire shield in here, uh, minus one to hit is fantastic yeah do you want to upgrade into a master libby or you keep cheap? i think i'm gonna keep him cheap for right now okay so I've, I've, i i think we need more troops um i i don't know what you're on about all these cursors but i really like auto bolt rifle interceptors i was i was gonna put those in i was gonna put those in last i i, I want them i already have them in when i'm sitting here so I, I do love them. The, if I'm going to bring in an intercessor, I'm bringing an auto bolt rifle intercessor because I love the fact that he can advance and still do whatever he wants to do with that assault weapon. And that's just a volume of shots. And volume is still something that is always good. Yeah. Yeah, I totally so, agree. I think that I, I like them better to the incursors. I think you want one infiltrating unit because you need an infiltrating unit. And then I like paying the premium for infiltrators because, again, we're lazy and tired out here. And well, then, I do want, I want to, because I want to be able to start on the board somewhere. I'd like to be able to start in the best piece of terrain, best wherever. So that, that incursor, that, we can go one intercessor, one incursor, one infiltrator is what I would do if we're only going to take three. I got you. Okay. I, and I'm open to more troops. I think MSU Space Marine troops is quite obnoxious, but I think just to recap where we're at, we, uh, I, I'm not even filling detachments. I'm just taking units right now. We have a Primaris Librarian. We have an Incursor Squad, an Infiltrator Squad, an Intercessor Squad. So three troops, we can get a battalion pretty easy. Big unit of six Flamer Aggressors. Primaris Apothecary, who is the Chief Apothecary. Unit of six Eradicators. And that's 1,045, so about halfway there. Attack bike squad with three three multi-melt attack bikes. Attack bikes? So it's a why, why attack bikes? Because, I'm gonna, cause I'm, cause I've got a really cool Vulcan model, and the attack bikes... I can slam on to give them full rerolls to hit and to wound, and it extends the board up. Yeah, they're fast too. I mean, they really yep. can get around corners, and yeah, that's that's kind of. Some winners still have their one free reroll to wound. Yep. Why don't you do three solo attack bikes and have them just be obnoxious little do stuff things? Then you know, uh, we, we could we could do that, but I, I'd like to be able to really be disgusting because Vulcan can only give that to one one thing. So I can literally have. So you want to drive three bikes around, reroll hits, real ones, and just end something. Correct. So, and we can do that. It's just that would I. We could also, if I was going to do a chapter master instead of Vulcan, I would definitely split these into three individuals. It's just whether you're looking forward to get those four reels to hit and wound. Because you can chapter master versus Vulcan. Say again. What is what is a chapter master versus Vulcan impact? For that? Oh, because Vulcan uh, is the guy saying you're super awesome. Correct. So if you're basically, if I'm using Vulcan, I'd really like to have that attack bike squad because I can put it on one thing so that I get all of my multi maltas All six shots are going to be full hits, full rerolls, to, rerolls to hit and to win. It sounds like we're adding Vulcan because we're taking this unit with the expectation of Vulcan buffing them. So let's add Wait, so saying if we're taking this, if we weren't, we aren't taking Vulcan, we just make this three individuals. Yeah, yeah, point. yeah. Well, we can, we're going to write this list and then I'm going to poke holes all over it and we're going to Right. Work on it. We can also look at things like, I mean, the 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 yeah the the big speeders are actually legit now. They they got a little the stone speeders that John and Jack love. Yeah, I mean, you got, for instance, the hammer strike has three heavy melted shots. It's got 
two missile shots and it went down to 145 and it flies. I, I mean, think, that's, I think before we add this stuff, cause this is, that's not bad as a chassis flying around shooting stuff. I think we need to add more beef in the middle. Oh, hundred percent. I'm just on. saying like, these are things that we're going to look at. I still would like another Vanguard veteran squad. A 10, a two fives. We'll probably just, we can make it a 10 and we'll just combat squad. Yeah. You miss out on one Sergeant, which is an attack, but it's, it, it's either one. I mean, you're, you're, the thing is, is that if we've got the spots, cause we're right, I don't think we're going to max our elites here. And that's, I just had a battalion up right now. So I think that you can, you can take two fives if we want to, to get that Sergeant, because I would like that Sergeant to be swinging for the cheap seats. Now here's a question on this for all, all three of us is, when you're making your Vanguard Veteran units now, you don't get the armor contempt if you have a Storm Shield, Rally Shield, Combat Shield. So I'd like to have an info, but I also want to benefit from that armor and contempt on most of my other guys. So it really depends on how we equip these now. Yeah, that, that's a that's a tough choice. I mean, I, it, I think the the initial reaction from you know, most people that I've spoken with about it is those Storm Shields just coming right off. Yep. I and, think there's still value to bring like two in a five man, like that yeah. kind of ratio, just to get that involved in close combat. Or if someone hits you with like an AP five thing, right? Like that. That's that, that's the thing is um, I'm really debating on. I think that two might be the sweet spot on that. And then you you ask yourself, what am I bringing with the rest? You know what I mean? Because I do, I still like the idea of Astartes Chainsword Lightning Claw. It's cheap, and you get a ton of swings, uh, and and a ton of swings is never bad. I really enjoy rolling a bucket of dice. It makes me happy. And do we want someone like a sergeant carrying that big old hammer around? Does do salamanders? They give you a reroll to wound, but they don't hit any better. So unless you don't hit any miss, you're just going to be hitting on fours. Yeah, I don't think that that is where it's at. Yeah, I think that we still go lightning claw. Uh, if anything, you go relic blade at that point in time. Yeah. Do you want the storm shield on your sergeant? I do not, because I don't want to take the saves on him, because I want him, especially if I put a Relic Blade on I'm not spending 10 points for this silly man to not be able to swing. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we're going to go Relic Blade, or that's not, I mean, that's an option. You want to do Relic Blade? I want to do Relic Blade. I mean, it's, it's, it's a nice damage two weapon. It's AP3. It's plus three strength. Um, and the thing is, is that these Lightning Claws are pretty nasty with, with the Salamanders, again, because of the fact that they get... A strat for plus one to wound. So rerolling to wound and getting all that is pretty tasty. This unit is making me click so many buttons in Battle Scribe Bad. Yep. Uh, five of them if you do two Storm Shields, two Lightning Claws, a Relic Blade, and a Lightning Claw is 130 points. I have it at 142. Oh, no, yeah. So I have five dudes. Uh, the Veteran Sergeant has a Relic Blade and a Chainsword. Then I have two Vanguard Vets with Lightning Claw Storm Shields and two Vanguard Vets with. Uh, claw bolt pistol. I, 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 on that. I decided to have mine walking because I accidentally unclicked the jump pack button. Don't want to do that. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, so that's a 142 point unit. You want two of those because you typically want your multiple <laughs> combat units to have both flanks covered and all that. Mm -hmm. So, recapping, we have a Primaris Libby, Mr. Vulcan Histan himself. One of each troop squad, Incursors, Infiltrators, Auto Bolt Rifle, Intercessors. Six Flamer Aggressors, apothecary, Primaris Apothecary, who is the Chief Apothecary. Two Vanguard Vet Squads with two Lightning Claw Storm Shield guys, two Lightning Claw Chainsword guys, and a Relic Blade Sergeant. A unit of three Multi-Melt Attack Bikes and a unit of six Eradicators, all Melted Rifles. We are at 1644. Put in your Primaris Chaplain on Bike, give him the... Excuse me, give him Forge Mantle and the Salamander Mantle. Stick, so he's going to be the. Is he going to be the warlord? Or is he just going to have a warlord? Team? Right now, he's going to be the warlord. Is he going to be a master of sanctity? I think we do because I want. I think I like the five appeal of pain from mortals. That's like money in the bank versus tyrannids. Well, the thing is, is that they're putting out. You're already getting two, two auras of six up phantom pain. So I don't 100 percent know if I want that in this particular army. In anybody else's army, yes, a thousand percent. But with the fact that I'm getting a six up, I don't know if I want to spend a litany on getting just plus one more at that point in time. Uh, that's that is a very good question, to tell you the truth. Well, what litanies do we think we're using? Why do we have a primary strap one? You can make him a beat stick because of the fact that he's already fairly unkillable. 
and you can give him the problem is we can't give him the benediction because we're going to give him the mantle if we do that so if we go strength he's getting a little bit more juice i do like catechism of fire in this army because of the fact that you can get the plus one to wound so you can give uh somebody plus one to hit so i love that i mean you're always going to be looking for his obviously the one he gets by default which is full rerolls to hit in his aura so i like i'm not gonna lie i love chaplains i mean all of these are a big deal they're Uh, they're big could i could i interest you in canical of hate as a default because six inch consolidates and pile ones and plus two charges yep i was just about to say that it's an aura of it too yeah i thought that was like just auto include yeah, anyway, I never thought that was ever a question. Yeah, it's it's bigger than it's because it's what you're you want you're looking for your chaplain to do, whether he's kind of buffing and countering in the backfield or whether he's trying to get up with everybody and push forward with it. So there's there's a lot of roles. It's such a chapter. powerhouse. I mean, I know we were talking about earlier about you know Vulcan maybe not hitting as hard, but all you know, all the Marines they benefit from a a pretty healthy stat line oh, yeah. for number of attacks and you know wounds. And, and the thing with him is, is that this you got to figure that this is a guy that can be running around, and late game he can actually just take objectives by himself at that point in time because it's it's a seven wound character that's T seven, could be T eight minus one to wound, and no one can reroll any wounds against him. I so, think this yeah. guy's awesome. He's money in the bank. Um, yeah. Do we want to monitor his strength and just let him hit stuff, or do you want a plus one to hit? I think those are the best two options. Yeah, both of them are. It's a big deal on that. I think that when you're building this list, that the the characters' loadouts are going to be kind of to flavor to taste. To be honest, you you want to basically uh, put those around and see exactly where you want them. Well, Brad, you're so. the star of the show. So why don't you? Why don't you what, what flavor are you feeling? Are you feeling the? Mantra of strength or the catechism of fire? Oof, let's, we're gonna go. I'm gonna go mantra of strength. Beats I feel version. I feel strength. I feel some beats going on here. I feel strong about it. I definitely forge mastering it up. I'm definitely got that salamander mantle on it. Uh, we do need to get some rights of war, and I'd like to get that the Akula art here. So, so we got a Primaris Libby. He can do whatever he wants. The Primaris Apothecary. He needs the Selfless Healer Warlord trait. Yes, he does. He's going to take a little bit of a uh, hero of the chapter to get himself another bonus. Uh, he, we also could give him <coughs> anything we want. <laughs> we don't. We definitely don't need him to have uh, his another field of pain. So he's not carrying that. I, I like this guy with. Um, we don't need another Filipino where I was going to say, I like this guy with the Vox of Spiritum. Yeah, for the bonus of the distance. Yeah. So you do want that or you don't? I'm, I'm debating on it, though. It, it, it makes it, we're, we're getting into the nitty gritty of just things. I want to, like, let's focus well, on the list. Okay. I would say, let's get these units out because after, when you're looking at the the small minutiae of it, it, it is goes to how how you feel that you're going to play this. So. And also, what, what we're doing here, the process, it's, it, where it's very sporadic, we still don't even know, I mean, at this point, we're kind of a battalion, but it didn't start with a battalion. It started with, what's my list premise? What units do I want? And that's, in my opinion, the, the best way to write it. 100%. You, you want to go with the what your game concept is going to be, and then move from there, as opposed to trying to shoehorn yourself into any one thing let's figure out how to make the best list that scores our secondaries that takes our game plan and makes it actually happen so i feel like our third secondary is a weak spot stranglehold solid um we got a bunch of marines are gonna watch the middle of the board Ulf, also solid um i think we as far as number of bodies go we got 10 vanguard vets 15 infantry like basic dudes and then two big beefy eradicator aggressor in an attack back squad i think i think we need more stuff in the army and we need to get very solid i think we want to look for an r d an r d a homer or whatever you know what i mean it's, yeah. gonna, it's something that can come in so what's so, gonna what's gonna help us out with that possibly another troop unit at that point in time i, I do i think that marine troops went up in stock a huge amount uh, especially you were forward deploying ones because we have two missions that are sticky objectives where if I start on them, I keep that objective if I have only command phase. And also we have tons of mission built in actions that we have to do and the armor contempt and the 
nerfing of indirect means that if we're starting somewhere and we're hiding, people have to come to us to get us off that objective as long as you're starting behind. I love being able to pick the best pieces of terrain on the board outside of my deployment zone and just choose exactly where I'd like to start the game. I like that. Um, what if we take, what if we add five more intercessors to this? I already did. I, I was to say, I already have that in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> then we have a hundred points left. Yeah. We have exactly a hundred points left. Uh, I th- actually. I th- What's that? 106. Uh, Nick, come a little bit closer to the mic. I'm sorry. Do you have 106 points left? Uh, I have 100. He wants to lock those Vanguard vets in a little bit different then. Oh, okay. Uh, whatever. So, close enough. Either way. But it, it, we can get either way. It's 106 actually makes a difference because I'm not going to lie. I kind of like just adding another Incursor squad at that point in time. So uh, my Vanguard vets are 142. They have five jump packs. Sergeant just has a Relic Blade. The Yeah, I put a cloud. That's why. I'm going to take the Lightning Claw off him. I was doing both. It's all good. So I'll put the thing on. It's perfect. So they're 142 exactly on the nose. So then you're going to want to add an incursor unit? Well, let's talk about it because do we want, do we need another big hit? There's that much time we could make a solo of anything else. We'd have to really, we'd have to take something out if we'd like to get. Let me make uh, a left field suggestion here. Let's. What about a speeder storm with five basic scouts, or even six basic scouts? Uh, just because the storm is like its own little fast skirmishy thing, which I like. And then you can R and D after disembarking with those scouts and move sixteen with the speeder, get out, move six, and just if it's a six man, you get it. I don't hate that at all. Let's see how many points that is. I know no one takes scouts, but well, looking at well, no one took scouts because yeah. They became elites. They were no yeah, longer yeah. your cheap troops. You know, but good. now we're looking at how to perform a function on the tabletop. And you kind of have to, I mean, this, everything we're doing here is in line with that, but you have to look at what the actual thing does and less the unit name. The, the only thing with that is that we'd have to, we'd have to find some points because we, the scouts, the land speeder storm takes us to 1949. We have 51 points. Yeah. So six scouts, is 84 points. They're not that cheap. And then a storm is 55. That six is the number you need to automatically pass. With. How are we on uh, like elite slots and HQ slots? We, we, we well, max those out. We, max we are out one, HQ. two, three, four. We only have four elites. Well, the scouts would be your fifth. You have six in the battalions. We're looking pretty okay. Uh, we're 33 points over. If we take the six man scout unit. I mean, you were talking kind of, you know, I know you're being silly about it, but servitors, I love servitors. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind just throwing the servitors in here. Like 28 points for a unit of four or something. The thing that I, I don't think servitors solves the, the R&D problem, though, because I think you can cover your half of the board really easy with R&D. That's, that's pretty much going to happen. True. With infiltrators, you might be able to get that third quarter. Infiltrators and cursors, I think you can get an eight on R&D pretty well. Your opponent's quarter, it takes a real amount of effort uh, in most games. So I True. think... The storm and the scouts are where it's at there, but they don't have to be. Just as consideration, I don't think servitors solve that. Is what I'm saying. I do like this. I, li- I like the idea of a, of a storm in there. It's great for blocking. It's also a vehicle, so p- things that move over. Uh, knights are coming out, for instance. You can you can block, do move blocking more effectively with that. And I love it for early game stranglehold when I don't want to expose anything else. Yeah, I, I don't want to put any these expensive pieces out. You could, um, you could forget the scouts entirely and just go double land speeder storm, and then you're four points over. I actually kind of like that better, to be honest. Okay, we could f- find that four points. That which wouldn't be that hard. I think that's a relic blade. Just comes. Yeah, so one hundred percent. One relic blade turns into another lightning claw, dude. Yeah, I don't hate that at all. And and the thing is, is I, I like this list. I'm not gonna lie, I like. You know what, Brad? I'm going to give your sergeant two lightning claws. Ho, ho, ho. So looking at this, I mean, again, thinking just trying to look at what, what's filling that role for that amount of points. I mean, are assault squads any play in those? Honestly, I don't hate assault squads. Like a five-man deep-striking assault squad and, and salamanders, they can hit decently okay. What do you think, Brad? I, I actually don't. I, I don't hate them at all. I mean, that's, that's another thing that'd be nice. I mean, just, again, being able to just run up and do something. 
is legit. That's an awesome suggestion, Paul. Look at that. Well, looking at terrain and everything, and I know we're saying that, and we'll talk a little about this in part two, where the with the specific matchups, we say that indirect fire is g- going to be minimized, except for one specific faction. So, I want to talk about that as we as we uh, barrel towards part two. Yeah. Oh, Just, you imperial guard. So we had the list exactly two thousand. Uh, now I'm trying to work in this assault squad and see if we do work in the assault squad and give them all jump packs. We're forty five points over after I cut the second squad. You want to try to work this assault squad in, or you want to keep that second squad in? Either way. I mean, I, I think that these are, now we're getting into... Like you have to play test it a little bit and see what you Yeah, I, I was just going to say, I need to play this. I, I need now to put this on the board. But I, and that's the thing is I love about this is when I'm making a list, what I like to do is get my core concept, uh, 1,400-ish, 1,500 points, and then start removing elements and putting elements in while keeping that core so that you can figure out what worked and what didn't work. If you constantly are changing the entire list every time you play test, you're never going to get, you're never going to be able to solve for X if you're trying to solve for Y and Z and the rest of the alphabet at the exact same time. So I'd like to get my army identity, and then we figure out two speeders or assault squad and a speeder or multiple assault squads. You know what I mean? Just that's when we start figuring out after we get these elements that are the 100 percenters. So. Just to recap the list, uh, I think this is its final beta form, its final test version. And then in part two, uh, that's where we will talk about how it plays in all its various matchups. We have a Primaris Chaplain on bike. He's got the Mantra Strength, Canical of Hate. He's the Master of Sanctity. Um, he's got the Salamander's Mantle. He's got... Forge Master. Forge Master, yep. That's it. Then we've got a Primaris Liberty. He's got the Fire Shield and Drake Skin as his powers. Vulcan Histan himself, uh, five incursors, five infiltrators, and a unit of ten auto bolt rifle intercessors. Big fan of that unit. Unit of six flamer aggressors, two units of five vanguard vets. The sergeant has two lightning claws. Two guys have uh, lightning claw storm shield. Or sorry, yeah, two guys have lightning claw storm shield, and two have lightning claw chain sword. Primaris apothecary with selfless healer. Um, we got to figure out what his other relic is if we want it. Three multi melt attack bikes and a unit. Six Eradicators, and then two Landspeeder Storms. 2,000 points on the nose. Delightful. I'd like to point out it's Brittany's birthday today, so we need to have a shout-out to that. Shout-out to Brittany, the old man's wife, best friend, big fan. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. All right, Paul, you want to bring us home? Uh, yeah, so look, that's that's the list. It's been an interesting exercise, uh, you know, really going down the thought process and uh, curious to see what people think if they were going a different way or thought we would come to a different conclusion. What did we miss? Love to hear some comments from folks out there or uh, well, maybe what did we kind of reveal that they weren't thinking about? You know, as are the people think that that big unit of aggressors is actually where you want to have all those points, you know, Um <laughs> uh, it's going to be exciting, but let's talk about it uh, now in part two about how these uh, play into very specific factions uh, and army list, and you know how it's actually going to perform on the table against some of the uh, more competitive heavy hitting things in, in, out there in the in the world right now. You don't want to miss it. Uh, thanks for everybody that's joined us for part one. Uh, we'll see everybody part two in just a minute. Bye. Later, Gator. Like what you just listened to. Check out Art of War Down Under and Art of War Unbroken on the competitive 40K network. TheArtOfWar40K.com